Tula here. So today we are finally approaching Agile principle number seven and the one that it's for me paramount for Agile because Agile was born in software development. And this one is the Agile principle that states working software is the primary measure of progress. Now, let's make sure that we are understanding here what working in progress, what, you know, a working software really means. And here we're really talking about a piece of software that is tested, that delivers value to the user, or at least, you know, even if the user is the next system in the chain and it is integrated with whatever code management system you have. And if you're not from the software world, I know it kind of is weird what I'm talking about here. But there is a very specific understanding and that piece of software now is part of whatever functionality that existed before and it doesn't break anything, it just adds to it. So then I have to ask, are you part of an organization right now where your code is constantly integrated, where you can deliver at any time you would want to your customers? and? Is quality something that is really uncompromising or you only test the stuff in the end? And that is really important because this principle really states about working software as encompassing these things and not as having separate stages in the process like we used to have. You have the analysis, you have the development and you have the test. And that always allows people to say, I think we are 70% done but you really didn't have anything to show for. So that's really a big difference, a major shift on how you approach, how you can say that a product is really being developed, that progress is really being made. So with that in mind, in this video, we are going to be looking into three ways uh, or three moments that are important to coach your teams and your organization so that you can have this principle really alive everywhere. The first coaching point that I would bring about here for this principle is that the problem is not technology, it's process. So basically what happens is that technology today and has been for over a decade now allows you to do code integration very quickly and very beautifully and reduce the amount of human error in making sure that you are eliminating complexities on the process because being building your little functionality Isolated is one thing, but once that really is part of the product or when that really attaches to other pieces of functionalities, there is when you have the problem. So usually the problem in here, why do we say it's not technology and it's process? It's because organizations tend to manage their resources. And unfortunately, by resources, I mean people. That's how they are referred to in organizations. So you would have departments that are very siloed where people only do something that would be called analysis and people will be only do something that's called testing. But ultimately, the customer doesn't care about any of that. They care about the final product. And if you just keep having that staggered approach on how you manage your people, you unfortunately have a lot of handover of work. And that can create a lot of errors that definitely makes the process a lot more slow. And that is the sort of thing that allows you to still say things like, it's done from my end, which is a requirement document and no piece of code has been started yet. Now, just be mindful. That means you're going to be coaching for cross functionality in here. And cross functionality is not just something that you decide that you want to do. You have to have the structures in place because people belong to the departments that they belong. And, you know, they are called analysts or testers or developers for a reason. There is a hierarchy. There are systems in place to reward people and progression in career. So ultimately, if people feel that they are losing something and gaining nothing, nobody will want this amazing cross functionality. So the, the job here that you have as a coach is really to have the discussions about how this can positively affect the customer and what we produce to them, as well as the people who are producing the goods. So if it's going to change job structure, if we're going to put people together in teams that look like nothing they've seen before, it has to feel and be better than what they already have. Now, the next coaching point is a little less obvious. And I know for folks who do a lot of design thinking, that might not necessarily come naturally. But 
there's, there's the approach of doing prototypes and prototypes are great, but prototypes don't really help you to get past the working software is the only measure of success type of thing. So in the prototype, you have usually something you want to test, something very specific. And I remember way too many years ago when we had some testing on cell phones when they were nothing like what you would see today, the very old Nokia brick. And even before that, we would test on cardboard uh, mock-ups with little stones in there so that you would have the exact shape, the exact the exact weight, and then you could see, okay, I can understand how people will respond to this on their hands. So this is answering one part of the question. But the thing with prototypes is this. Prototypes are not always working software. So here is the notion of the um, hamburger that I'm gonna give you. Imagine a hamburger. Would you eat the first slice, which is just bread, then the next slice with just onion, then the next slice, which is just the lettuce, and then the meat. Well, that's basically those ingredients alone, right? That it's not those things combined. You would rather have, even if it's just one bite, a vertical slice cutting your burger and then eating the whole thing in a small bite. And that's what we mean by integrating software or whatever your product is early and often. So you can't have a layered approach on how you produce things and usually prototypes they answer things for one of these layers so you can't say that because the bread is good your burger will be good so when you do use the approach of working software as primarily um, measure of progress you are constantly integrating things so you can say that your beautiful functionality works but it doesn't work when it's together with everything else. That wouldn't make sense, right? And integrating constantly your code guarantees that that never happens, that whenever you say something is done, it means that it's done as in added to the big pot. It's like having a hamburger that just got tastier now. And this is really, really key because even if you're not a software developer, I think you can appreciate that you only know if things really work when you put them together with whatever it is that they belong to or that they are meant to work with together. It's something that we know very well that we in software development, we develop for interfaces and that's all right. That means I know what you're expecting. So I'll give you something that looks like that, but we can always have some surprises. So if you leave that integration piece for the very last minute, what you thought was 80% done, almost 90, in the end could very well be just the 50% done because all the integration of this little piece here turns out the interfaces don't work so well and I end up with a you know round whole square peg and they're not gonna fit the third coaching point might be something a few people I know a few sore about which is what about customer delight everything now is customer delight right well not quite so we do have a principle that says it's agile principle number one and it's gonna say that we, we delight our customers with valuable delivery of software of products but suppose that you just created something that your customer actually dislikes and they, they give you a feedback on that is it not progress yes it is because you just learned in which direction you don't want to go you just eliminated one path and you stop going in the wrong direction and that's why when you remember some of the other principles that tell you, hey, do small batches, go small and iteratively, is so that you can be eliminating all those things that really don't work in small steps, in a less risky way, in a way that costs less. But delivering something that doesn't delight your customer is knowledge, and knowledge is always valuable. And on the flip side, Customers might like something that you made that doesn't have the proper quality, but they don't care, right? They are so excited. They finally have that thing that they wanted on their phones or whatever have you. But the reality is there's something else. There is also technical excellence, another agile principle, and many others that say, hey, it's not just about customer delight. Your customer is delighted, but remember the agile principle of motivated individuals? Yeah, the customer is delighted, but we did this after having people working 80 hours a week.
So these things, they have to be combined. And we can't just think of one principle that's the one we like the most, and that's what we're going to use. So I find that the challenge here with the working software as a primary measure of progress really needs to tie other things up. We really need to look at the principles all together to really start making a, a mental map of agility in our teams and in our working process as we develop our product. So just having the customer drooling over our services and our products, it's not alone a definition that we are a success and that we can stay in the market for a very long time because poor quality, uh, bad cost and budgeting management will definitely tank that product or the company very soon. So ultimately, Cutting corners in the software that you're producing, in the product you're making, in the name of customer delight is a misinterpretation of customer value because you will know that if you work in a highly regulated industry, let's say like banking or healthcare, Sometimes your customer doesn't know about the regulations that you have to be compliant to. And they might think that you're taking a very long time to develop something with a high quality and they would rather have that thing soon. But you know better that once these regulations are satisfied, it's only then that you're safe to market. And if you skip that, you're definitely not delivering something that is either good for you or for your customer. So be careful. The light sometimes come in cheap. And with that, you will definitely want to stay tuned with the Agile principle number nine, which is the one that talks about technical excellence. And I think it's very much in line with this one here. But for today, we'll stop right here. I hope this video was useful and don't forget to subscribe and like or dislike and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.